Welcome back. We've already spoken with Adam Johnson on AI and chip stocks and semiconductors. Our next guest is an expert in quantum computing stocks. Some of these names are up 900% since the start of 2024. Joy Yang is head of index product management and marketing at Market Vector Indexes. Joy, thanks a lot uh, for joining us. Um, tell us about uh, some, some of these names. These are much lesser known stocks than the likes of uh, uh, NVIDIA or Taiwan Semi. What are, what are the, some of the names that fall into the quantum computing sector? Yeah, so really interesting um, to see some of these smaller names or unknown names because this is a very nascent um, space, quantum computing. So we're seeing names like Rigetti, we're seeing names like D-Wave and um, uh, IonQ really rise up within this just this last year. But if you go back to 2023, you know, at the end of 2023, a lot of people hadn't heard of NVIDIA that much. And it was a very similar story. This focus on AI is transitioning from the infrastructure builders, semiconductors like NVIDIA to the uh, companies that are using those semiconductors to build applications and services. And these are the quantum computing companies that we're now seeing rising, you know, over 900% year to date. Um, so uh, if you look at our overall quantum computing index, uh, we're seeing it, you know, this is an index that's up over 65% year to date. So, you know, we're seeing this story from AI shift and evolve from semiconductors now reaching a wider ecosystem and more stocks are coming into play. We're, we're looking again at Rigetti Computing, uh, the stock uh, up 1,100% so, so far this year, but it, it looks like it's all a November and December story. In other words, the rally is very, very recent. What, and and, and D-Wave looks largely the same. The, the ticker symbol on D-Wave, QBTS, uh, in, in the U.S. also uh, very much a, a story over the past couple of months. What, what has happened in the past couple of months to... Uh, cast the spotlight on these stocks? Well, there's a lot of catalysts um, that are now being focused on, which is, you know, Amazon is announcing services around a new platform around quantum computing, as well as Google had announced that they had a breakthrough with the quantum computing chip. So, you know, we're now beginning to see, um, you know, a lot of buildup and a lot of media focus. And, uh, you know, this media is focus is bringing attention to some of these smaller stock names. Um, and, you know, we know this is going to be a long term play um, around AI, it does take a lot of build out. And we're now seeing kind of companies being able to take that infrastructure and use that building block to create, you know, uh, actual services and applications and computing uh, hardware and software. You mentioned an index that tracks this group of stocks. Just uh, remind us what the name of that index is uh, so that viewers, if they wish, can, can follow the sector through that index. So it's the Blue Star Machine Learning and Quantum Computing Index. Um, the index ticker is MVBQTUM. And are there any ETFs that track uh, that index? Yeah, so there is a quantum computing. It's the um, Defiance Quantum Computing ETF. Um, and I believe the ticker for that is BTUM. Okay, let's talk about the U.S. market. Let's talk about the broader markets. Uh, how do you think uh, mar markets look for 2025 stock markets? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, last week we had um, a few event shocks or new shocks, and you know, it turned into a Grinch sell-off rather than the Santa rally that people are expecting for year end. Um, that's you know, primarily you know, there's a disconnect between what the market expectation is as well as you know what the da data and the fed is telling us so um you know right now we're seeing that this is an environment where we could potentially see inflation higher for longer and this is really disconnected from what the markets optimistically want they want more rate cuts so right now we're seeing some volatility you know both in the us and canadian markets um, but also so, you know, I think investors really need to acknowledge that there are still a lot of 
risks out there, whether it's policy risk or geopolitical risk or just, you know, government risk that we're seeing now, even in Canada or South Korea or France, you know, so there's a lot of fragility out there and people, you know, are still in this risk on position. And for 2025, we can see a lot of volatility and potentially uh, any catalyst could move investors off their risk positions to risk off positions. You follow uh, the gold sector very closely. And in some recent commentary, you said you like the, uh, the value valuations right now on junior gold miners. Yeah, so junior gold miners still seem undervalued relative um, to gold prices itself. And um, so, you know, we still see there's a lot of uh, valuation opportunities for junior gold miners, as well as just gold can still remain a good hedge towards some of these risks that we just mentioned. Joy, thank you so much for an interesting conversation. Joy Yang, head of index product management and marketing at Market Vector.